Hello and welcome. I'm James Milan. I want to introduce a series of conversations that we uh, have facilitated here at ACMI on the ballot questions that voters will be voting on on June 11th. Question one is the debt exclusion to fund the new high school, and question two is uh, an override. Um, what we have done is gathered folks to provide uh, the strongest arguments possible, both pro and con, on each of those questions. And then we've given them all the space and time that they need to make those arguments as well as they can. So without further ado, we'll proceed into those arguments now. Enjoy, make the best use of them that you can, and don't forget to vote on June 11th. conversation about uh, the yes vote on question one and that is in support of the debt exclusion to build the uh, new high school. I am joined by two people who uh, know the issue inside and out, uh, two members of our school committee and the building committee. Uh, it's chairman Jeff, Thiel Jeff Thielman, excuse me, um, and uh, Kiersey Allison Ampey who uh, have both served on the school committee as I mentioned for a long time now and are well aware of all aspects of this process. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight's conversation and uh, we just our aim here is just going to be to flesh out as fully as possible the all the arguments in favor of, um, uh, of the rebuilt. Um, and let's start by just the threshold question that of course everybody's has comes to mind initially, and that is, why do we need to undertake this project? Sure, we um, are operating a high school that uh, serves 1,400 students. It uh, is uh, facing uh, overcrowding. Uh, it, there's rising enrollment in the town of Arlington, and the current facility that we have cannot accommodate that rising enrollment. The facility is deteriorating. Uh, it was put on warning by the New England Association of Schools and Colleges for facilities. So we have rooms throughout the building that are not fully operational. We have science labs uh, that have major issues in them. Um, we have uh, classes that have to take place outside uh, in the hallways. Um, we don't have adequate facilities for our kids. And so uh, we need a new high school because of inadequate facilities, uh, because inadequate space, deteriorating facilities, and the warning that NIASC put us on, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges put us on, saying that uh, this building is not acceptable for a modern high school. It doesn't meet the needs of a 21st century high school. It doesn't allow us to meet the educational standards we have for our kids, both set by the state and that we as a town set for our kids. Did so, you want to add anything? No, I just thought you might enjoy, the audience might enjoy seeing some of the um, numbers here. So we brought a graph that shows the total Arlington High School enrollment um, from t over time. It starts in, in uh, 1980. The minimum enrollment back in the 19, around 1995 was 939. Since then, it's been steadily increasing. Um, I'm not going to be able to point on this, but uh, as Jeff said, right now it's around 1,400, but by 20... What are we thinking, 2025? In around 2025, we expect to have over 1,800 students, which our high school is almost at capacity today. Mm -hmm. We with don't have, with 1,400, we don't have room for these additional students. Mm -hmm. So um, another thing, do you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, another thing, another thing to understand is that, you know, Lots of people uh, have moved to the town in the past 10 or 15 years don't understand the whole history of the building. And we have uh, done a lot of work to educate the community about the history of the building. The first part of the building was built in 1914, 1914. <clears throat> the second part of the building, second edition, built in 1938, 1914, 1938. Then uh, additions were put on the building in 1960 and 1961. In the mid-1970s, the town tried to pass a debt exclusion to rebuild and build a brand new high school. That failed. Uh, five years later, the town spent more money than it would have spent on a new high school by adding uh, buildings in 1980 and 1981. And so we're looking at a facility that was built in the last century. It was, it, it was built with construction materials in the last century, and it was built for education in the last century. It's a, it's a confusing mile-and-a-half layout. Uh, that is exhausting for kids. Kids are routinely late for class. That's part of the culture in the school. That's not good educationally. 
to have that kind of a culture in the school, but that's what we have right now because it takes too long to get from point A to point B. And <clears throat> this facility, even if we renovated it, doesn't have enough space for all the kids in the town that we need to serve in it. So it, it just doesn't work as a high school. It's a very, very confusing place. It needs to be replaced as soon as possible, and it probably should have been rebuilt, rebuilt a long time ago. But here we are. We're the generation that has to fix this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So another way that the high school is failing our students is in handicapped access for this whole sprawling um, complex, like just said, almost a mile and a half of corridors, there's one elevator and it's undersized at that. So students who are, um, who need to use the elevator, whether it's because they're in a wheelchair or for other health reasons, have to leave class early. They still get to class late and they have to go, whether their class is in the farthest corner of the school, they still have to come back to the front of the school to the, where the single elevator is and then walk all the way back. Um, but and one other thing that we did was we brought a few pictures of the building um, showing how many of, the serv many of the systems have been shown to be at the end of their natural lifespan. So this is beyond maintenance. This is, things don't, you don't expect your car to run forever. You don't expect your everything in your house to work forever. Eventually you have to, you know, your appliances, your refrigerator, you have to replace it. Your dishwasher, you'll have to replace it. They wear out. The same is true of all the contents of a high school. The doors, the windows, the heating system, the elevator, um, all of these things are at the end of their lifespan. So no matter what happens, we're going to have to fix these things now anyway. Um, we've been holding off somewhat because it doesn't make money, sense to put money into a high school when we know that we're most like, we're, we're hoping to rebuild it soon, but these things are, um, they have to be fixed. So on this first slide, we've got pictures of the doors, the windows, heating system, and the tiny elevator that is for the whole complex. On this next slide, we have pictures of one of the other limitations of this high school. Over the years, to make space where we had none, rooms have been divided, they've been repurposed, and one of the results is that there are columns in a number of the rooms which impede traffic, they impede the vision of the teacher to the student and the student of the teacher, uh, the student of the board, um, and that's true, that's one of the things that was mentioned in the NEASC report. Um, the final thing we have a slide of is just a picture of a piece of science equipment. Both the, sci the science labs are much smaller than the MSBA recommendations. They're, um, the average is, I forget, like 900 square feet and the MSBA recommends 1,400 square feet. There is one lab that's 1,400 square feet. Um, but uh, the equipment hasn't been updated and, and the picture shows something which I think is a, gen it's a I'm not even sure what it is. <laughs> it's really old. Mm -hmm. it looks kind of cool, actually, but <laughs> in an antique kind of way. Right, and that's not, not how that's before, not right. how you want to, your students to be learning. Um, so. Okay. So clearly, we have a physical plant um, that that seems demonstrably, you know, below par uh, and and inadequate to even our current needs, much less those going into the future. Uh, talk to us a little bit about another question that I know that people um, are, uh, if not confused about, perhaps just don't know enough about, and that is the process for how it is that we have gotten to this point of presenting to the voters uh, what looks like a very large bill yeah. um, for a very ambitious project. Tell us about that process. So our, our, our process actually began in 2014 when we submitted what's called a statement of interest to the Massachusetts School Building Authority uh, to do a feasibility study to look at ways uh, we could address the needs at Arlington High School. Uh, <clears throat> that first uh, statement of interest was not accepted. We were accepted in, uh, with, with a statement of interest that we resubmitted in 2015. And then in 2016, we were admitted into a process with the state. Uh, the state authority is called the Massachusetts School Building Authority, and that uh, organization uh, has two roles. One, it's, it provides technical assistance uh, to cities and towns that want to rebuild high schools, and then two, it provides uh, uh, funding. 
Um, <clears throat> and when it provides funding, it provides intense uh, fiscal oversight of every dime you spend on that building because it's that state money. And so um, <clears throat> we- And a process oversight and a too. And a process oversight. And so the MSBA dictated a process uh, that required the town to pick an owner's project manager uh, that was approved by the state to pick a, uh, the, the state actually um, has the majority of the votes in the selection of the designer because they want to pick, pick a design firm that they trust. Um, and then uh, the state mandates a whole process that begins first of all with a feasibility study and then uh, includes a, a schematic design phase and then the phase that we're in now. And so the state <clears throat> is checking your numbers uh, throughout the process. Um, the state is mandating that both the design firm and the owner's project manager are uh, submitting or evaluating costs throughout the project and the state's uh, checking those costs. And so, and the state also mandates that we build, a, a, we come up first with an educational plan. So one of the things the state requires, the MSB requires that your, your town or your, your city or town develops an educational plan. And from that educational plan, um, uh, the entire design is, is created. And that's a really important thing for people to understand. The teachers in our high school, uh, the school administration, the school leadership, began working on the educational plan about five years ago. They knew there was a need when NEAS came and when the New England Association of Schools and Colleges came in 2013, there was a need to do something about the facility. So they started saying, what do we need to do educationally to meet the needs of all of our learners in that school? What, what should the school look like? And when that design was developed, then we had something to work with to build the, the, the physical de design yeah. of the building. Mm -hmm. and, and that educational planning is all done in advance of budget setting. And this is as per the MSBA process. Mm -hmm. And you have to follow this process if you would like the MSBA to participate and eventually um, uh, reimburse for some of the cost. Mm -hmm. um, so after we had the educational plan determined, then we figured out what spaces does that mean that we need in the new high school. And from there, we went on to pick, uh, the designers went on to create multiple different designs, um, looking at different aspects. Let me pull up, sorry. Well, well Kirsch is yeah. looking for that. One of the most important things to understand um, <clears throat> is that in a lot of the discussions that we had in the community, um, there were there were important discussions about design and the way the building looks and where it's set on the on the built on the on the property, but the most important thing is that we are building an educational facility. We're building a school that's going that's that needs to behave flexible enough and designed in the right way to educate kids over the next fifty to one hundred years. That's the bottom line, and that drove every decision that we made. And I like the state process because of, because because the state says let's figure out what's needed educationally for the long haul. Let's not get caught up in the emotion of debate in the community. Let's think about what's needed in the, in the, in the long run for this, uh, this town educationally. Once you figure out that, then you get into the conversation about the design of the building, the cost of the building, et cetera. So we've designed a building that's flexible enough and has uh, the facilities needed to educate kids in the 21st century. If I could ask a clarifying question, so the MSBA role, as you've just described it, is clearly a, um, a fairly comprehensive one. They're involved in a, on a number of different levels. Um, when, and, and you described the, the, the multi-step processes, first coming up with the educational plan and then coming up with a variety of potential designs that would serve <laughs> that educational plan. Um, is the MSBA actually giving you, um, is, is, are they vetting those educational plans and those designs, or are they just saying, yeah, those are acceptable? They, Do you so understand the, what I mean? Yeah, so the, the, the educational plan has to fit within the state standards. And yeah. so the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education certifies the educational plan, and, the, and then the MSBA says, okay, this meets state standards. So we can't go beyond state standards. We have to go be within the state standards. Mm -hmm. but, but one thing, um, there are multiple meetings with the MSBA and with school administration and building committee administrations. And one of the things that came up at these meetings was that not only did our was our educational plan felt to meet state standards, but there was significant praise for yes. the um, educational plan. Uh, I think the word outstanding yes. uh, was, was used bad. quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, which 
we were very happy about. We right. felt the, that you're saying that the word was used. They they were the, describing as outstanding the educational plan, yes. and they are the folks who see everybody's educational plan. exactly. Yes. So no, our, our exactly. educational plan was yes. very very highly rated. But keep in mind, we have a highly rated high school. So we have a high school that's in the top you know 25 of all high schools in the state of Massachusetts, consistently high ranked, and so it was important that we keep those standards up in the new facility. You know, one one thing that you were you're, you're talking about design. We, we were uh, tasked by the state of Massachusetts, by the Massachusetts School Building Authority, to look at three options. A renovation only, taking that entire plant and just renovating it. That was not possible because of, of, of enrollment. We, we looked at it. We looked at it. We looked and at it. And found we, that it wouldn't work because all the kids won't fit. It's, mm -hmm. it's not big enough. So yeah. renovation only was eliminated. Once we said renovation only was eliminated, we crossed an important line because that meant we had to keep accreditation. We had two choices. We could do a renovation addition or build a new school. Mm -hmm. And so we had, we came down to, in the last summer, about a, about a year ago, we came down to four choices. Yeah. And the four choices were, um, two options were renovation addition mm -hmm. and two choices were build new. Mm -hmm. um, and the committee looked at all four options. The renovation addition options were more expensive. Uh, the renovation addition options were limiting in terms of what we could do to, to, to uh, develop and execute the educational plan. And so we chose an all-new option. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that made all the difference. Also, there's many other, you know, it's less expensive. The all-new option is less expensive. It gets us faster to net zero uh, in terms of energy uh, conservation. Uh, it eliminates, if you, we went to a renovation addition option, we would go two years without a gym and two years without an auditorium that was unacceptable to the building committee, unacceptable to the educators in the building. We would also be spending money on modular classroom, classrooms, which would not be reimbursed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And so it was clear, uh, hands down, no brainer to build a brand new school. And when you look at that facility, built in 1914, 1938, 1961, 1980, 1981, you know, it made eminent good sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on the slide, we've got the four options, and then this is just the next slide. Just shows a number of the reasons why we felt that by building a new facility ultimately was the best choice for Arlington. It minimized the disruption to the school and to the students. It does preserve two-thirds of the front lawn. It's faster construction. It gets students into a new building in three years, in 2022. So kids who will start as freshmen next year will be in juniors. They will enter a new building. Part of the, you know, it won't be all done, but they'll get new science labs. They'll get a new auditorium um, in January 2022. Um, so and look, if I can just uh, delve into a little bit more, when you say it's going to be, it's going to minimize disruption, and you've just <laughs> given one example of that, which is, you know, they'll they'll get into and begin to enjoy the new facilities faster than they otherwise would. Um, what about though? How, what? How will it work? How do you envision that if this goes through, how will it work uh, for students as this as the construction begins to happen? Will they have to leave the, the facility, go somewhere else? No. How will things go? They will. So. Uh, we will begin, if this uh, passes on June 11th, shortly thereafter, we'll yep. sign a project scope agreement with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, with the MSBA. And we'll also sign an agreement with the construction management firm to manage the project. Then we'll begin the design development stage of the project, which is kind of getting more granular okay. about, the pro about the project itself. Um, and that will take place between July 1, 2019, and uh, the spring of 2020. By July of 2020, we'll begin construction uh, that construction will take place uh, over the next 18 months. And then in January of 2022, we will um, have a performing arts wing and a STEAM wing, a science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics wing uh, on, on the front of the building. So what is the front of the building today? There'll be classrooms and performing arts by uh, the spring of the senior year of this year's ninth graders. And so students will then, the next, in, in, the, in January of 22, students will move into that facility um, and then we'll start to do construction in the old building, knocking it down step by step um, until you get to 2024 when you have a brand new, completely brand new facility. So students will not need to leave the AHS campus for their education over the next four okay, years. So, okay, construction. so, uh, so I, I guess we are to understand then um, that from 2020, from the, again, this is on the presumption that things go forward. Correct. From fall of 2020 through January of 2022, students will be still on the yes. physical plant yes. of AHS, mm -hmm. 
just in a in a in a compressed yes. uh, situation because you'll be work or they'll be working on the the front end the steam building as you said and the and the and the uh, other new yes new and, and one of the things I understand I'm a, uh, Chris is going to have to talk more because <laughs> I'm speaking a little too much but well, one of the things people have to understand is that when the design development stage starts in July of 22 with the construction firm in July of 2020 with the construction firm selected, then we're gonna get into all the details about safety on the site, uh, where construction vehicles are gonna be parked, where construction workers are gonna park, where the students, how the students are gonna actually enter the building. We have a good idea of that right now, mm -hmm. but all those specifics will be worked out. So during the construction, uh, the students will be safe at all times. There's very strict regulations about that, and it's just common sense. And so our school uh, district leadership, the leadership of the high school, the leadership of the building project will be in constant conversation about ways to make sure everything is safe for kids and for teachers and parents. Um, and it, there'll be some interruptions and you will not be getting into the school the same way you do now while construction is taking place. Okay. Okay, so just uh, as a takeaway on that, and we, we, we may be moving on to other subject matter, just uh, as the takeaway there, parents of uh, either current high schoolers or approaching you know, those who will be in high school in those years can rest assured that they that their their children are going to be going to the same place for the entire time, Correct. and yes. that the place will change around them, but they will be Correct. arriving yeah. and leaving Correct. from yeah. the same yeah. point. Yes. All right. Um, any other uh, any other uh, aspects of the process, either the the process up to this point or the process forward, assuming that the uh, project gets approved, uh, that you want to that that you'd like to highlight. I think we covered. I yeah, mean. I think I think we covered most of it. it. It's so the process. We had the four choices, and then we looked at. We compared them, looking at cost, looking at functionality, and ultimately chose what was three or six A um, as the best fit. But even the the. Um, slide that I have shows that there's been changes in how the building is set up because we've been listening to the community, we've been listening to the students, we've been listening to the building committee, and we've asked the architects to evolve the design in ways that we feel would work better for Arlington. Um, for example, when it was originally drawn, the building had the auditorium in the back. and there were a number of us who felt that that wasn't a great location because when we have, our concerts are huge. The auditorium seats 900 people, there's often multiple seatings. When people come, they're walking from all different places, but, but mostly along Mass Ave, they're coming in. And we felt that it would be better if we had the auditorium in the front so that there it's more direct access, mm -hmm. and also so that it's it's a show, pay, show place. Um, so the community can understand that we have a performing arts department that's worth celebrating. Um, so the process was very much going back and forth and, and working out what works best. And, and that actually that process will continue into next year again assuming the debt exclusion passes but the uh, design development is where we'll be working out even more of the big of the smaller details the finishes the the exact placement of things um, we won't have major changes but there'll be a lot to work out I think it's a good point that you that you just raised in terms of probably people would be interested to realize that of course, you're beginning and mostly centered around the appropriate educational plan to bring all of our students forward for the next, as you said, 50 to 100 years. And then you have a lot of practical concerns, and we should also address the fact that there are going to be some complications related to the site itself because mm -hmm. it's a, it's an unusual site for 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 schools. But um, I think that people may be reassured, and it's certainly interesting for me to to, to realize from what you've said that. Uh, that there is also an acknowledgement of the value of, of, of our Arlington culture, yeah. of, the, of the way that we do things, of the things that are important to us uh, in terms of the way they look and feel as well. 
um, which I know has been a, a major concern for some mm -hmm. in the community. No, we've had quite a dialogue, I think, with the community, and we listened, and we you know, moved the, the, the front of the building uh, back, so we made sure there's, we're using two-thirds of the front lawn. It's going to be front lawn. Um, we actually have more green space around the building than we have currently. Uh, we listened to the community about the size of the auditorium. Uh, the state mandate is that you have an auditorium of 750 uh, students, uh, 750 seats, regardless of your of your uh, of your enrollment. And we heard loudly and clearly from many parents and many people who came to our to our nine forums that they wanted the largest performing arts facility can, we can possibly create. That's 900 seats, what we have currently. Mm -hmm. um, we listened loudly. We listened to people who who came to us. Um, and very clearly said they want as much gym space as possible. So we have slightly more gym space than what the state mandates. Um, uh, and so we listened to people who came to us and said, you know, uh, we want more, the, the teachers and the, uh, and the leadership in the school said, we want more art uh, space, uh, more art uh, rooms than the state mandates, more science from the state man than the state mandates. And so, <clears throat> you know, the building reflects what the community wants and needs. It reflects what our kids need. So it's not just a cookie cutter uh, a design mandated by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's something that really came from the community of Arlington. When we picked the final facade and the final design, that was something we did by listening to everybody in the community who wanted to participate in our process. And, uh, and so it it's very much reflects lots of community input. I like to say that this isn't the building committee's building. Uh, this is Arlington's building. This is something that everybody uh, had a voice in, everyone had a chance to weigh in on. And, you know, the final design is something we're very proud of and we believe it, beats, it meets, and we know it meets the educational needs of our kids. We also think it's going to be something that's going to be aesthetically pleasing and it's going to be a point of pride for the community for the next century. Mm -hmm. um, and unless you had something that you wanted to add, Kiersey, I... I... No, just, just that I think the slide, um, I don't think we had a chance to show oh, the picture of the new high school mm -hmm. and it shows we have retained a look of, we've tried to retain a more traditional look, which was coming across pretty clearly that the um, community was interested in. It has brick, it has columns. Um, the columns are not the a exact recreation of the, bull, the current Bullfinch facade because for this building and because of the way it's designed and because of the size, the bullfinch facade doesn't work. It would look like it would look like um, like the building on Up, where you have the uh, on the movie Up, where you have the big skyscrapers, and then you have this little thing wedged in between. It would be a similar out of scale. I mean, maybe not the same way, but but it would be out of scale um, and would not look as pleasing from the street as um, people would want. So we've worked within the constraints that we have, um, including cost constraints, where we're trying to minimize cost um, and yet come up with something that the community is going to be happy with and proud of for the next 50 to 100 years. I mean, one of the things that's so great about this building is that when um, you go into the building, there's a beautiful central spine, So, which we were not able to design if we wanted to do a renovation addition using the old old buildings. It just wasn't possible. And so now you walk into the, either the building, either, either on Mass Ave or behind the building. And um, when you go into the building from Mass Ave, um, you see above you is a discourse lab. You see you walk in and you, you see um, uh, in front of you the media center, which our generation, my generation, we call the library. Um, <clears throat> you walk down, we take advantage of the 20 foot, 24 foot uh, grade change in, that, in the, this very complicated site. And you walk into a cafeteria. You go to your left or your right, and you go to your classrooms. It's going to be a much easier building to navigate. That would not have been possible. This would not have been possible had we retained uh, and done a renovation addition using the old buildings. It would not have been possible. And so I think, in fact, our, our, our senior architect on our, on our committee, John Cole, who has been involved in all building projects in the town of Arlington for 25 years, started uh, as a person who wanted a renovation addition, as did I. I wanted to keep the old buildings. A lot of us mm -hmm. did. And as the facts came before us, and as we saw what we needed to do educationally, for not just for, you know, for, for our kids, but the kids were going to come into the school in the next 25, 35, 50, 100 years, we needed a brand new design. And the design that our architectural team came up with, with lots of community feedback and input, elegantly does this.
So we are uh, almost two thirds of the way through our time today, and I want to make sure that we do get on to what you just mentioned. As I, th I tend to think of as the C word, which is the the cost, uh -huh. and that is of course uh, what has a lot of people's attention, or or is certain to get their attention um, as those costs uh, get refracted into uh, people's the, the property tax that people are paying. Because as we both, as we all know. The vast majority of the revenue that is raised in this town comes from the, the pockets of homeowners in town. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, just very briefly, um, some people have noted the, uh, the costs of recent rebuilds of uh, elementary schools and even the Gibbs School that got, uh, that got rehabbed. Why is it that a high school costs so much more money than other than other kinds of schools. So, is there any short answer to that? Yeah, I think, I mean, sure. I mean, first of all, high school is a very complex, uh, comprehensive, uh, has to be a complex, comprehensive facility. Uh, I, you know, if you talk to people who do building projects for a living, um, a high school is actually more complicated than than a dormitory place on a college campus. It's more complicated than a than a than a uh, uh, many college campuses of uh, uh, educational wings or classroom. Uh, buildings uh, because you have to accommodate everything in a college campus and in, in a high school campus. You have to accommodate the arts. You have to accommodate uh, performing arts. You have to accommodate athletics. You have to accommodate students with special education needs. You have to accommodate um, students with learning. Uh, you want to learn different things that you might have in a, that you might not have in a traditional high school. And in our high school, what's unique about our building is that you have multiple services in that building. So you have a preschool. We're mandated by the, by the laws of the state of Massachusetts to start to provide a special education services to children beginning at age three, which means we have to have a good preschool. Uh, so we have a preschool in that building, which most, probably, probably about half the schools uh, that we've visited uh, have a preschool in their building. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, district administration offices in that building. We have Arlington Community Education. In that. If you go to Arlington High School right now, there's, there's all sorts of classes taking place. The, the building is filled every night with adults and other people uh, taking uh, classes there. Um, we have the Lab Cla Collaborative. That's a, that's a collaboration with different towns in the, in, the, in the region to provide special education services to children. Um, and we have, currently we have, some, we have uh, town offices in there which are moving out uh, when we go to the rebuild, but those, those offices are in there. So it's a very complex building. Normally a high school is a complex building, and it's even more complicated because of all that we put, on it, put in it here in Arlington. And then our high school is even more complicated because of the site that it's built on. The MSBA prefers a 25-acre site. Ours is 22 acres, so we're already small. Um, as Jeff mentioned, there's a 24-foot grade change from Mass Ave to the fields. That's not an, on a small site, so that's not making things easy. Then you have Millbrook running underneath the site. Um, so not only is there I mean, normally you'd be worried about water infiltration and stuff, but we have an actual stream. Um, and then the final thing is that there is contamination, uh, both in the front of the site and the back of the site. The back of the site has contamination with chromium, which has been treated and capped, which means you put a layer of soil on top so that the dirty soil is, is kept below and, and, and uh, safe. The front has VOCs. Yeah, VOCs, which are being monitored, um, but all of these things mean that our high school is going to be even more, high schools are expensive, as Jeff mentioned, but our high school is going to be even somewhat more expensive because it's going to be hard to build. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then, then I don't, what's not on the site, I mean, what's not on the slide is that we will be doing phase construction, which is what we talked about, where we're actually building next to it, and then we'll be knocking things down and, and building anew. And that's more expensive than if we had a 25-acre flat site somewhere else in town, but we don't. Mm -hmm. We looked, the next largest site was 16 acres, and then they got smaller after that. Mm -hmm. Um, so this was the best we can do. So one of the many possibilities you did consider and want to make sure that people are aware of is looking at other places. Yeah, yes. We were obligated yeah. by the state to look at other places. Right. We did that. That's in our report. Um, 
and so we, yeah, we did that. <laughs> we were hopeful, uh, but there, I mean, there really isn't uh, any other place to put the high school but at the current high school. Okay, so let's let's talk about the costs. Mm -hmm. um, the overall figure is two hundred ninety-one million. Uh, that is down slightly from some previous figures that we had heard and that you guys have been mm -hmm. looking at. Um, what proportion of that, uh, either in actual number or just percentage, is the MSBA going to be uh, providing? So the MSBA is going to provide around $86 million, an estimated $86 million. You'll see uh, that they approved 83 million, that's because they don't include additional monies that are for contingencies. So, but we can assume that, and we, we do, um, in terms of planning out our, our uh, funding. So they're expected- I'm sorry, so do you mean that the MSBA, because they do these things over and over and over again in different mm -hmm. communities, they understand that once you get started, there's gonna be some additional costs and they're willing to to increase their contribution? Yeah, for, for, for very specific things. Okay. And these are things that we expect we will qualify for. Um, so Arlington's estimated share of the project is $204.8 million um, for the total project budget of 290.8. Okay. Um, and uh, the you know, the, the, the way that that is going to hit different households depends on the size of the household, mm -hmm. of course, and the, and the kind of household it is for, you know, the figures, I think the latest figures has, you know, average condo owner is going to see a $500 raise. Then mm -hmm. maybe the single family home, I think is closer to 800. Yeah, I've, I've um, got a got slide, I've right got there. this slide That's right great. there. And, so it's got you know, the, and, and up from yes, there for and your families, numbers were very good. But yeah, that's a, obviously everybody can tell that's a substantial hit for mm -hmm. any household. Um, uh, people are going to want to be reassured, as you guys have already stated, that you did everything you could um, to reduce the costs to you know, the, the, the minimum that would really see our vision through, our collective vision through. Uh, give us a couple of examples, perhaps, uh, to help people understand the process through which you did that. Give us a couple of examples of things that you, in the end, you, you either looked at cutting them out and then and, and realized you just couldn't and why, or that you actually did, you know, either reduce from, you know, original estimates or, uh, you know, ways in which you were looking to cost cut. It's a good concrete examples of that. So when we um, uh, sent our option, our, our, our option 3A to the state of Massachusetts, the, the cost at that time was about $308 million. Um, we did some more value engineering. We got the price down to about $300 million, roughly. Um, then the committee met uh, prior to final submission, and we reduced the cost by another 7 or $8 million. And so that process was kind of looking at certain things and saying, okay, do we really need this in the building? Uh, you know, and I can't even think of all the different things, but as a number of different items, do we need these things in the building? And so we, we did our very best before submitting it to the voters to reduce costs. In some building projects in the state, they don't do that. They do that after um, they've, they've started the project. So we did that before we submitted it to the voters. And um, we are committed, the building committee is committed, with the help of our architects and owners project manager, to continue to look for ways to reduce cost once we start this work. So we're going to keep the value engineering process, that's what it's called when you reduce cost, isn't stopping on uh, June 11th. It actually continues throughout the entire four or five years of this project. We're always looking at costs. We're always looking at ways to reduce costs. And looking over us, overseeing everything we do, is the Massachusetts School Building Authority, which has a view into projects all over the state. They have the best cost estimators in the state. They see all the building projects. You can't put anything past them. We wouldn't be here on this stage talking about uh, this project if we hadn't gone through a lot of hurdles with the state of Massachusetts, reviewing every single item we have in that building. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't get this far in this process. We wouldn't get to a point where we could say to the voters of Arlington, we have $86 million coming from the state of Massachusetts. You don't get that far unless you've, your cost estimates have been reviewed and reviewed and reviewed. So um, <clears throat> we went through you know, some of the decisions that we made. We looked, for example, at the possibility of placing uh, district offices at the parliamentary school. Would that be cheaper for the town? Uh, that would be very disruptive because we have a, good, we have a, a functioning, a highly a popular preschool there that's privately run but used by lots of people in the town of Arlington. It actually wasn't less expensive. It was, more, it was less expensive to keep the district offices inside the building. We look at the possibility of placing the Mononomy Preschool at the Parliamentary School. 
that actually turned out to be less, uh, less uh, uh, too expensive, more expensive, because we uh, found that if we put it in the high school, the costs are likely reimbursable. Um, so we did a number of uh, studies to look at ways to reduce costs. We found that placing the comptroller's office, uh, the IT, the information technology office uh, uh, outside of the building saved us money. So we moved those out, outside of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were constantly throughout the process looking at ways. I will tell you on this 15 or 18 person building committee, the majority of everybody in the building committee was very cost conscious. And there wasn't really in the building anybody in the building committee saying, let's spend whatever we can. In fact, the majority of the building committee were like, how can we reduce costs? That was, that was a constant conversation. And it started, it started when we made the decision about not doing a renovation addition, which was a beautiful looking building, but was more costly by $25 million. When people saw, when some of the people that were sort of on the fence about a, resign, about a renovation addition saw that, that number, $25 million more, they opted for the new design. And so the process started, that was our first cut, was $25 million, not doing renovation addition. Mm -hmm. And then we made more cuts. <clears throat> and so, you know, now we're at a point where we're very confident and, com and comfortable with the building that we have. We think it's the right building for Arlington. We think it's adequately priced. If you, if you compare our uh, cost to other costs, uh, we're actually, you know, right in the money. And the other thing is, you know, uh, the town next door to us, Belmont, is building a new high school that's going to cost everyone $1,800 per, house, per household. Ours is going to cost a lot less than that. Um, building a school is an expensive proposition. It's just a fact of life. The other thing that, that people need to consider and remember is that they don't experience these uh, increases in property taxes right away. It's going to take place over four years in all likelihood. It's not going to be perfectly $200 increase per year, uh, but you know it's going to be. It's as we borrow the money to build the building, your property taxes will go up. You'll you'll feel the full. Uh, the, the full brunt of this tax increase in 2024, five years from now. Mm -hmm. You will by 2024, but not right away. And that's something people need to understand. Yeah, I was about to ask you about yeah. that, so I'm glad that yeah. you, 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 you jumped the gun in a great way. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, did you want to add anything on that, Kirsty? No, I just, I pulled up the, um, one thing that people have had questions about is how does Arlington compare, Arlington's project compare to other high schools and we did what we call a benchmark analysis where we looked at all the different local schools that we felt were the most comparable projects. Um, but in doing so, we had to take their project and dial it to the right timeline because construction costs in Boston are high and they're increasing rapidly. They're going up 4% 4, 4 per year. And so if we're around a year behind, if, if our project was going to start again in a year, it would be 4% more than it costs now. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had to do that to the other high schools. And what it shows is that our cost is very much in line with all of these other projects. Um, there's reasons why none of them are perfect matches. Um, and it's a little confusing because the cost per pupil is what the MSBA reports out, so that's what we've used. But when they do their pupil, when they divide by pupils, they're just counting high school students. So they're not, they're neglecting to count the 150 preschoolers that we have who are students mm -hmm. and need a place to go to school. Um, they don't include the lab program. Um, is there any other students in? I think that those are the main sources of the students, yeah. So our, if you were to divide our total cost by the true number of students who are in the high school, um, the project cost per pupil would be down significantly more. Um, but even understanding that, we're still very much in the ballpark with these other schools. Um, okay, uh, I have even more that I'd like to ask about, but we are very quickly running out of time. So I'm going to instead just um, ensure that you both feel like there's nothing really uh, substantive that we have neglected to, to bring up, and uh, just to make sure that, that you feel satisfied uh, as the conversation Let's, concludes. I think we should just I'd like to talk just a little bit about the features of the high school. So mm -hmm. the first slide here is that cutaway of the central spine. And it really, I think, I you love how John. Two minutes to do so, okay. by the way. 
Um, John Cole puts it really nicely. He says it brings joy to an architect's heart. Um, what it shows, Jeff's already explained what it shows, but then if you look at how the whole school is divided, there's a humanities wing in the back. Um, there's a STEAM wing where you have science, technology, arts, and math. Um, then the central spine goes down the middle and athletics and performing arts are off to the left. And the central spine really brings the school together and is a gathering space and will be just an amazing space for our kids. I heard once one third grader was shown the fly through video that we have and they respond and go, look at all that space. I'm gonna have so many friends. And I think that's what we're trying to buy for the students of Arlington is a place where they can feel comfortable, where they can find friends and where they can learn everything that they're going to need to know in the next 50 to 100 years. The only thing I would add is that, you know, uh, we're going to keep listening. So the building committee, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a meeting scheduled on Friday, June 14th, uh, late in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, we're going to talk about the results of the election. Hopefully they're positive. Um, we're going to be uh, moving forward uh, if the results are, are, are positive with a uh, construction firm to begin work on the project. And we're going to keep listening to the community and keep gathering input um, and keep communicating with the community about safety and about, uh, and about you know, navigating the site. And we're going to keep the community informed with the project. And, and I said the other night at the forum, as we know anything about the project, we're going to share it with the community. Uh, and so we're looking forward to making this a very transparent process. We're, we're going to have forums with neighbors, uh, you know, starting right away to get their input uh, on the project and to listen to their concerns as the building starts. It's going to be impacting them. Uh, we're going to have uh, meetings with the entire community about where construction vehicles are going to go, where the construction workers are going to work. So, uh, you know, the dialogue will continue and we want public input. Uh, you know, this is, uh, people don't quite, uh, actually more and more people actually believe this now, I think. This is actually the less expensive option, building a brand new school. Mm -hmm. um, not, if this doesn't pass, the least expensive uh, option is, is more expensive than this. Mm -hmm. And so the least expensive thing for the town is to vote for this. The best thing to get a, a better education for our kids faster is, is the option that we're proposing for, uh, to, to the voters. We have vetted it. Uh, this has been a two and a half year process. The building committee has been working on this project for two and a half years. We've had, I don't know, 28, 29 public meetings. We've had nine public forums. We've had all sorts of input. We have enjoyed the process. The dialogue has been great. It's time to vote. It's time to vote yes. And it's time to get this done for our kids. All right. Well, thank you both very much. Appreciate the conversation very much and hope you do as well. Uh, for Jeff Thielman and Kiersey Allison Amphi, I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.